and welcome to today's lesson about the Louisiana Purchase. The Louisiana Purchase is an extraordinarily important event in American history as, amongst other things, it doubled the size of the country and began our march westward as part of what we know as Manifest Destiny. Um, in 1803, Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte of France offered what they called the Territory of Louisiana to the United States for $15 million. All we wanted was the Port of New Orleans because we controlled the Mississippi River, but the one thing we didn't have was the very end of the Mississippi River and the Port of New Orleans where our goods can get shipped overseas. Um, which was an important economic factor for us. Um, instead, Napoleon offered us the entire territory of Louisiana, which you see right here, for $15 million. Um, it is safe to say that that was a good price, as I would say the property that encompasses Waldo and Washington um, probably is worth about that amount of money. I'm estimating there, but uh, this was a good deal. Basically, this landmass that we're talking about that was put up for sale encompassed about 14 current U.S. states and parts of two Canadian provinces. This was a large chunk of territory, and it was being offered essentially for a steal. By agreeing to this, if we agreed to it, we would gain 828,800 square miles of the French territory of Louisiana. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly because I don't know French. But, um, and the French gained control of this territory from the Spanish uh, as Napoleon was conquering his way through Europe. So Napoleon's interest was in making money to support his war efforts and from his perspective he was going to come back and conquer the United States later anyway so he was going to let the United States temporarily borrow Louisiana and he was going to come back and take it back anyway which never happened but what did happen is the Louisiana Purchase doubled the size of the United States So President Jefferson, when he was offered Louisiana, had some issues to contemplate um, which were ironic in nature. There was controversy for him. Um, because he was a Democratic Republican, he believed the government was not supposed to do anything that the Constitution didn't specifically say it could do. Meaning, the Constitution did not specifically say you can sign a treaty with a foreign country to purchase land or territory. And because it didn't say that, um, the president was somewhat uncertain about what course he should follow. Should he live up to his ideals or should he do what he perceived to be best for the country? Like I just stated, the Constitution makes no specific mention of purchasing territory. Uh, it does give the president the power to sign treaties and it does give the Senate the power to ratify treaties but it does not specify what those treaties can or cannot encompass or have to do with. So in the fall of 1803, after the president decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and sign this treaty with Napoleon, the Senate had a very furious debate over whether or not we should purchase this territory. And in the end, as you might guess, the Senate decided, you know what? getting the land is more important than staying true to our ideals so by a 24 to 7 vote the treaty annexing Louisiana in exchange for 15 million dollars was agreed to on October 20th of 1803 and as if by magic the size of the United States had doubled and our borders now extended west of the Mississippi River so at this point we had all this new territory and we had never even seen it before so it was time to go exploring and so the core of discovery was created when the u.s purchased louisiana 
like I just said, it had never been seen. So we wanted to send some people out to go and check it out. President Jefferson decided to uh, create an expedition um, to go and explore the new lands. And he chose people that he knew, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Meriwether is actually a real name to go and explore the new lands. Um, they were friends of his, he trusted them, and they were very skilled in the techniques they would need to use to survive in the forbidding landscape that they were going to encounter. They left with 33 people for Hartford, Illinois, actually from Hartford, Illinois, on May 14th of 1804. And this is a very, very brief summary, but basically, during the expedition, they encountered many, many Native American tribes. They discovered many new species. Uh, they encountered and they crossed the Rocky Mountains for the first time, and they made it all the way to the Pacific coast of Oregon. If you have ever been to Fort Clatsop on the Oregon coast, that was originally established by the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And there's all kinds of Lewis and Clark signs all over Oregon um, because this was the final destination on their journey. They kept extremely detailed journals and made very accurate maps of everything they saw. Uh, and that gave the United States both a claim to the new lands and knowledge about the new lands as we pushed westward as a nation during the era of Manifest Destiny. Um, and we also, by doing this, helped establish America's claim to the land because um, large portions of this land were also claimed by the British, um, who still controlled what we now know as Canada, and at the time they referred to as British North America. So, they finally returned two years later, uh, on September 23, 1806. Uh, most people had thought they'd died or been killed, but they returned to great adulation, and President Jefferson was extraordinarily happy to uh, see his old friends and find out about the new lands and everything they had experienced on their journey. Uh, this is an extremely short summary, folks, but if you want to go ahead and write a short summary of this short summary at the bottom of your notes, now would be a good time to do this. And there is also a fantastic uh, National Geographic video about the Lewis and Clark Expedition, which we are going to watch in class, which will help you get to know everything you could possibly want to know about Lewis and Clark. Thank you for listening to today's lesson. This is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on Waldo Social Studies Online.